Well, when I was growing up in the 70s, I always remember seeing images of Northern Ireland that were very grey and bleak. And this building here, Stormont in Belfast, the Parliament building, it always looked the most austere, greyest, bleakest thing I'd ever seen. Well, I'm here today, it's pretty grey and bleak and austere, but also the weather is answerable to that. Fein is just about to give a press conference inside and I've coincidentally turned up at the right time to be present. Sinn Féin delegation is about to come down to brief the media uh, about what has been happening in the talks in London. Uh, at the moment it doesn't look like a, there is a lot happening. There are all sorts of rumours sweeping the building. You can see from looking around here the corridors are, are uh, quite uh, crowded. There's speculation that Sinn Féin will eventually pull out of the assembly and all that type of thing, but the key players are absent today, so I doubt any major announcement will be made. I think it will be pretty routine. In the event of failure in this, uh, in this uh, review, does Sinn Féin stay in the Assembly? We have made it clear, and, and, I, and my remarks have just uh, made it clear, that we are not interested in talking shop politics. We want to see the, uh, the commitments that people are, uh, are, are saying they have to the peace process translated into political structures. That's what the Good Friday envisaged. That's, that's what uh, people voted for in the referendum. That's what people were elected to establish. We want to see political institutions, a talking shop. There's uh, no substitute for that. If anything, they've become increasingly slick uh, presentationally in terms of the dress sense and everything like that. That has moved up a gear, but they were never slow in coming forward in terms of their presentation. They've always been very polished. I got involved in journalism and my first week in the newsroom in the BBC was the uh, week that the ceasefire happened in 1994 and um, that was an experience of <laughs> your first week, making it up as you go along, oh wow, here's a big story. And um, So then I kind of found myself being um, thrust into historic event after historic event after historic event. In terms of the post ceasefire period, the calls I would get from Australia, New Zealand, etc., increasingly less. Very rarely now do they call. Politics basically are boring. There is an appetite for violence, I would say, nationally, internationally. People focus too much on yeah, the bad. Yes, I think it's given us a really hard time. They really focus on the bad things and they interview the people who they really shouldn't be interviewing, you know, and they're just portraying the really bad side, you know, the bigotry. I remember other journalists saying, oh God, this is a great story, and actually almost thumping one of them one night, going, how can you call our country, the place we love, the place we were born in, how can you call that... How can you call it, it ripping itself to pieces a good story? Since the peace process uh, got going, there is renewed interest. But I would say that the public is very fickle and that they really only want to hear good news. Continued deadlock in the peace talks is something they don't want to hear about. But if there is a breakthrough, suddenly you become flavour of the month again. And I remember getting a phone call at about 10 o'clock at night when I'd finished about five or six shifts in a row and gone home and opened a bottle of wine and was merrily blotting out the, the events of the last few days uh, and getting a call about 10 o'clock at night, Barry, go to bed. Uh, we're going to need you in the middle of the night. East Belfast is burning. I'll never forget those words. And getting a call about 3 in the morning, getting up, going into the front room where I'd got my clothes and trying to decide what to wear. Do I wear a suit uh, and, uh, and obviously be a member of the press or do I wear just ordinary civvies? thinking if I wear a suit and I get sent to a loyalist area as being a member of the press I could get attacked. If I wear civvies and I'm in a Catholic area and there's a riot going on I could get hit with a plastic bullet. So <clears throat> I remember never ever being so frightened in my life as I was in the bedroom getting ready to go out. Once I went out I was fine. You know you, you click in. What did you wear? I wore the suit. I stayed in Catholic areas. <laughs> Some outbreaks of showery rain. BBC Radio Ulster News. This is Talk Back.
Between now and 1.30, their day must not come. The unionists who don't want Sinn Féin in government. Monday's quiet, is it? Mondays are always quiet. He was never yeah. peaceful. Well, not peaceful, no. you mean I'd say. People must be saturated by it to an extent. They are saturated, they are, but uh, they always come up for more. <laughs> the programme for me and Plank would be the so-called Troubles. Oh. And, and obviously now, since the shooting has stopped and the bombing has stopped, we've moved in now to the, the big political picture and people are uh, picking up their telephones and talking to us about that. And do you find you get good, good caller response? Yeah, our, our caller response can be excellent. It depends on what buttons you touch. We have 40% of the total audience in Northern Ireland for this 140,000 people. We'd have more audience actually for this program than for our television programs, oddly enough. And then with the world audiences as well, it, it's a great fertilizer. It's a great brand tub of ideas and opinions. and. Uh, it's entertaining because we cover more than politics. We do all sorts of things and people come on the line and they have things to say. And but, but David, you've got that one dominating story. Not all the time. Is that right? No, no. It's dominating at the moment because we happen to be coming close to the end of this review. For example, one of the biggest stories a couple of weeks ago was a number of fireworks being set off in the streets by kids. Uh, it has moved on now to a, a program which deals with all kinds of issues, consumer issues. And, uh, um, things, just things that are troubling people, transport issues, that sort of stuff. The things, ordinary everyday life issues, although we're not a consumer program, we're a pretty hard-hitting show. Occasionally we have days when we don't do it, we say, right, no politics today. Off we go. But then if somebody rings in about transport services, in a way it's politics, everything's about politics, education's about politics, consumers about politics, but we don't always cover the, the sort of nub question here. To put this very succinctly and bluntly for producers of current affairs programs and documentaries, indeed for potential viewers, Northern Ireland is a great big bore. People here do not realise that the majority of the English are totally switched off about Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. All they see is murder. They believe that they, they're seeing a totally wrong picture because the media gives them this uh, what, what are we doing, Brian? Sorry, I'm losing track of this program. No, I was talking to I was talking to our friend from Australia. So the editor says I haven't heard a word he said, which is true. So you do get a good world response. We do. Now that, uh, that the World Wide Web is opening up, uh, we find that the, our communications with the rest of the world are opening up with it. Uh, we have calls from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, North America in general, in fact anywhere in the world where people have an interest in Irish affairs. Uh, given the amount that the Irish have travelled and, and, and their influence in many countries, this is not surprising to us. Thank you all for your views. The time now is 22 minutes to 1 o'clock. You're listening to Talk Back. And another question for you, what harm would it do to Sinn Féin to ask the IRA to hand over some guns? Uh, 